Now let's explore the wavetable engine. So I'm making sure first that I'm on the wavetable, checking that I'm not using the analog or engine 2 at this point. And for the record, I'm just using the default preset just so we have something very simple to work with. So it's going to be very basic sound. So what are the parts of the wavetable um, oscillator? So we have the tuning section, we have unison, we have the modulations, we have the wavetable position and outputs. So let's get started. First of all, the tuning. So we have plus and minus 60 semitones for the course tuning. And we have a fine tuning of minus one to plus one semitones. Double clicking will reset. And we also have um, quantization locking. And what it means really is that I can choose specific notes for the tuning to be locked into. So I'll show you that using an LFO. Let's just um, turn off all the black keys and you can see that this is really uh, resembles keyboard, right? So th these are the black keys and these are the white keys. And what I'll do now is I'll modulate the course tuning with um, LFO1, for example. So you can al already see it moving, but uh, I, want, I want it to move really slow so you can hear it. So we, we can definitely hear that we are going through only a major scale, only the white keys. And if I just turn off more and get the LFO slower, so this is really locked into specific notes. And if I change the, the tuning here, for example, then I'll get some sort of a uh, mode of the scale. So let's turn that off. That's the basic idea here. Next, we have the unison. So right now we are using the classic unison, which means that we can add more voices. And they are spread with, you know, using detuning. And it's now it's 3%. Let's just get that, you know, push upward. Yeah, I should really stop the LFO. But that's, that's very common. What's not common about the unison is the chord option here. So when I'm going to chord, I can actually use the voices here to create some chords. And this is going to be very interesting. So right now I, I have like an octave. But I can also change that into fifth or maybe minor, minor seven, major. And so on. I also have stereo width. And let's go back to the classic unison. That's it, that's the unison part. Next, we have the wavetable position. Wavetable position means that we are going through different waveforms in the wavetable, and we, we have to really change that position ourselves, or we can use any of the modulators here. So let's have a look at that. Let's just take, again, 
um, LFO1. And we can see that immediately the shape is changing. If we move to the 3D, we can really see how it, w how it works, right? It's very, very nice. And changing the sync. And by the way, I can use any of the other functions here or modulators. Right, and double clicking, back to zero. So that's the wavetable position. Next, we have a modulator, and the modulator will basically take the waveform that we are using right now, whatever position we are in, and we'll modulate it accordingly. And let's hear it. So we have additional sound here. That's the modulator. And I can change the tuning. For example, we are now set to minus 12 semitones. Let's just go to plus 12 semitones. And we can select the tuning uh, to be relative to whatever tuning we have on the main tune section. It can be absolute, which means that it will be set to itself. And it can be in a particular frequency in Hertz. Double clicking back to the default position. Let's go to relative, but we can also change the uh, the waveform. So right now we have a sign. We can can have a triangle. can have even noise or we can have um, rumble and so on so I'm going back to the default here but we also have four different modulation options here the first one is frequency modulation which is really some, uh, you know, something that resembles what you would find in modular analog synthesis uh, types. So you have either linear or exponential. And let's have a look what it does. So when I'm selecting linear, for, for example, here, it changes the waveform. But we are at rumble here. This is the modulator and we are connected. So let me select the sine wave. It would be simpler to understand. Right. Next, we have the phase modulation, which means that we are modulating the phase position and it is related to the pitch also. Here we have different options here. We, we have a sync, sync option to the key that we are pressing. We can sync our phase to the modulator here, this, this one. And we can also sync to itself. It will just sync the phase with itself. It really can create some very odd sounding results and we can also have some sort of a randomness here and again these are the the way the phase will be synced and we can push it we can push it forward or we can take it really subtle here and of course we can combine that with any of the others
Next, we have this, uh, the, the phase distortion. And the phase distortion works um, as uh, first setting a target shape, for example, skew, or maybe um, round. And then according to the amount, we'll see our wave shape here cha changing to resemble the target. So let's see how it works. And let's change to tri pulse. Going to the left. And we can change it to pseudo um, yeah. pseudo phase mode. Yeah. And and so on. So that, that's the idea here. And I can also introduce the modulator. And next, we have the wave folding, which really means that we are folding the waves on itself. So the shape right now is a sine, and we already have a sine here as the base wave uh, form. And when I'm adding the amount, we'll see the wave folding on itself. I can also change the shape, it can be something else. It can be triangle, it can be some odd looking waveform here, more complex. And I can modulate that also by introducing the modulator. And you can see that you have the plus sign everywhere. That means that you can change the way these parameters work with the LFOs, functions, and other modulating options here, which we will cover separately. Now, last, we have the output. And it means that whatever we set here, all the, the work that we've done is going out to the filters. And we have a couple of filters. We have filter one, filter two, and we can select how much of our signal will go to filter one or filter two or anything in between. So that's the idea here. And we'll cover the filters separately in a different session. So that's it. Thank you.